from the point of view of mathematical statistics, our measured quantities are actually random quantities. And random quantities are described by distribution functions. And when we deal with measurement science, then the most important distribution function for us is the normal or the Gaussian distribution. And because of certain laws of nature, whenever a process or a result is influenced by many factors, then the more factors we have that influence, the nearer the distribution function of that result becomes to the normal distribution. And therefore, very often measurement results are distributed normally and the large part of the mathematics that is used in measurement science is based on the properties of the normal distribution. The normal distribution function curve is depicted in this slide. It characterizes the probability of a random quantity and the random quantity is y in our case and the probability is on the vertical axis and this distribution function tells us that there's a certain most probable value the mean value ym where the probability of this random quantity occurring is highest and as we depart from the mean value to either of these two sides the probability gradually decreases. So that this is basically a probability density graph. The highest probability is in the middle, the lowest on the sides. And there are some important properties of this distribution function. First of all, even though the probability gradually decreases and actually quite sharply decreases as we move away from the mean value, it never really becomes zero. So there will also always be some positive non-zero probability. And this is the main reason why usually we cannot give measurement uncertainties with 100% probability that we saw in another lecture. This normal distribution function property actually tells us that this is impossible. Now, the second important feature of this normal distribution curve is that even though it never really ends, so there always will be positive value however far we move from the mean value, nevertheless, the area, the area under this curve is finite. And in the case of normalized function, it's equal to unity, meaning the probability of this value being somewhere is 100%, which obviously needs to be true. Now, let us examine the normal distribution function more closely on the example of pipetting. So, we have a 10 milliliter pipette, and suppose we pipette several times, trying to pipette 10 milliliters every time. What happens? What happens is that every time we get a slightly different volume. So see, it's always somewhere near 10 milliliters, but never exactly 10, and also it tends to be quite uh, different at different times. If we now plot these values as a histogram, then we see something like this. This histogram, in principle, should resemble the beautiful bell-shaped curve that we just saw. But we see that it is in fact very different. The reason is obvious. We have only made 10 measurements up to now, and 10 measurements is too small number to get the normal distribution curve. Let us also look at this axis here. It's now not probability, but frequency. Probability and frequency are closely connected to each other. Basically, the higher the probability, the higher the frequency of a certain measurement result occurring within a certain limit. Let us examine now what happens if we make more measurements. So as the measurements come, 
we see that they tend to come into the center part more often than on the sides. And we can see that if we now make 27 measurements, then even though we still don't have this nice bell-shaped curve, we already now have more measurement results in the middle and less measurement results on the slides. So that the number of measurement is increasing and this distribution function depicted here by histogram becomes more normal distribution line. But if we now make many, a very large number of measurements, let's say 1,000, then our histogram really will resemble the normal distribution curve very nicely. It is not really easy to make 1,000 measurements, whatever the measurement is. But luckily, we do not need nearly as many measurements to get the important characteristics of the normal distribution. So usually we do not need to record this shape as such. We simply need to know some important characteristics or important parameters. And those most important characteristics or parameters are two. The mean value, which characterizes the position of this curve, and the standard deviation, S, which characterizes its width or the scatter of the results. So the smaller the standard deviation, the smaller the scatter of the results. And now with the use of this curve, we can make some very important uh, observations about its nature. So we can see that if we move from the mean value away by one standard deviation to either of the sides, then we get a contour of this shape. And it turns out from the properties of the normal distribution function that the ratio of this area to the overall area under this normal distribution curve is roughly 68%. This is the basis of definition of standard uncertainty. So standard uncertainty, as we see in uh, many cases in other lectures, is the uncertainty given at one standard deviation level, and also it's thereby uncertainty at roughly 68% probability. Now, we can multiply this standard deviation by some factor. And if we multiply it by 2, then we get this kind of curve. And now the area of this part here as related to the whole area under the normal distribution curve, makes up roughly 95.5%. And this here forms the basis of the so-called expanded uncertainty. So expanded uncertainty, as we again see in other lectures, is obtained by multiplying standard uncertainty with some coverage factor, 2 in this case, and it allows us, enables us obtaining measurement uncertainty estimate with higher probability. So this 2s level, or as we say, expanded uncertainty at k2 level, is uncertainty at roughly 95.5% probability. So the probability of the true value falling within this range is now significantly higher. And likewise, if we multiply S by 3, then the same percentage will be 